wondering why it is so dark. What are you trying to seek in the dark? How would you value the path of light? You must be a sculptor, a writer, or a painter. I'm sure you are fond of fine art. You wouldn't know me, even though you're always chasing me. <laughs> I am time. I am not here to tell you a story or narrate an instant. Neither you are here to watch a film. I am here to portray a real journey of a divine sculptor. This place may seem like a studio to you, but it isn't. What do you see around? Metal scraps, tools, paints or plaster? Unfinished structures and finished articles? For me, they are not mere sculptures. I see a spirit in them, a different world of creation beyond your vision. Just look at the kind of masterpieces our sculptor is carving here. Why do you look at it just like a spectator? Why do you limit yourself to being a part of an audience? Why do you lack the visual dedication and ability to appreciate as much has been put into making those pieces of art? You commonly assume that artists are hungry for the applause. They crave recognition and put their entire lives at stake to fulfill those desires. What do they struggle through and sacrifice to achieve them all? I have come across plenty of sculptors, but this one is different. Let me show you how. Do you see that? One can watch those artistic beauties for long enough. In every corner of such ambience, the art talks to you. They look like they express just as water or air speak their language. Do you know the language of nature's elements? For our material world, the language is money. In spite of the words used to communicate being different from country to region, yet what makes you and your world go around? Money. Many artists work for money. Some work for name and fame, while some work hard to be remembered. But some artists with passion like him 
make their craft their life and live them as craft itself. But it's not a job for them. It is a creation of art. Yeah, without knowing me, I started my sculpture journey because father was a traditional sculptor. So I used to see how he was modeling his sculpture in a different mediums, brass and mainly the wax, which is my favorite medium. I used to play with the wax when he's sculpting and I was trying to do a small version. I do remember in a, when I was age of fifth, I was making Hanuman. I was trying to make a tale of Hanuman and our father was happy, like, you know, the same tale used in his sculpture. And then, like, you know, this is the way, like, you know, I started uh, sculpting. Uh, but after, like, you know, few years, father, generally, like, you know, every father says, you should not come into this journey, this is very hard work and all. But uh, without knowing me, again, I've chosen that. And uh, after the plus two, like, you know, little conscious, uh, I proposed my father, like, you know, I want to join academics. He said, like, you know, our entire family, like, you know, there is an artist. Uh, why do you want to go for academics? You can try if you want here only. Uh, I conveyed my father, like, you know, there is a system, there is a syllabus, and there is a particular university, like, you know, where they teach traditional sculpture and modern sculpture both together. So, I sh physically, I take him to the university, I show to him. He was little nervous on a day one. After a few months, like, you know, he was happy about you know, what I was showing to him, what I was doing in the department. And then later on, he was imagining, like, you know, after the uh, bachelor's, he will come back to the home and uh, he will practice there. He was imagining. Even my perception was like that in the first year. And after going to the master's, the things got changed. Started working in a different way and started using different materials. Uh, especially, I, should, I must talk about my master's uh, program, like, you know, I had one slideshow, once and only slideshow. That particular sh slideshow, you know, take me to the, take me to a different direction. That one started that day onwards, till the date, I'm just following that. During my uh, fourth year uh, bachelor's, like you know, again the same discussion has happened whether you're going to continue your uh, education or when you're going to start practicing at home. So it was a very difficult question for me to answer. But I asked my father, What should I do here? I want to do, you know, finish my master's. So he was not conveyed in a day one. In particular, that month I have got a state level award on a sculpture, that particular first sculpture I've done with the scrap material, used cycling parts and all. So I give a title like you know now. So there was a sculpture like you know couple uh, seeing each and other. So I got the award. I called my father for the you know award ceremony. He was quite happy. But then like you know that day he decided this fellow is not going to come back to home. 
So finally completed my bachelor's. You know, when I was planning to go to Baroda, so father said like, no, if you have an option in Hyderabad, why didn't you do in Hyderabad? So then Hyderabad Central University I've chosen. So uh, when I was going for the like, entrance exam, he was not well. So he was giving a show like we will get the seat. So my father was not well, he was hospitalized. I went and wrote my exam. But uh, my entire mind was with my father. But uh, finally I wrote exam, I got the seat. After joining, like you know, after a month, father was passed away. That was again a very tough time. Uh, some people say, like, you know, do you want to continue your education? Who is going to give a food for you? So those kind of questions arise. I do remember my father's last words, you dreams and your desires, whatever it is, you fulfill them. I, we have a one house, you sell it, no problem. Because you achieved something. I have a confidence, you will do something. I don't mind. If people comment also, you don't mind anything. You sell it and you continue your education. That was the last uh, words, you know, I always remember those words. He says like, you know, you do the hard work, you forget about achievement and you forget about, you know, uh, what you are going to do, like, you know, you just do keep doing hard work. This was the suggestion, like, you know, I just followed and uh, he was best mentor, he was the first guru in my field and uh, talking about the mediums, in a sculpture, one of the toughest medium is a bronze, so the bronze casting, especially like, you know, my father used to work, you know, Chola's last wax bronze casting process. So the same methodology I learned from him, the same ideology I started working on a contemporary sculpture and a modern forms because there is a casting methodology entirely different from the traditional model. Now the Western people are using like Italian process, very different from the like South Indian process. But I'm trying to club together. I started experimenting in that. So I do remember always whenever I do bronze casting, I start worshipping my father then I do the castings. So this was happening till the day, from that day to till now. And uh, during my masters, I joined there, like, you know, there's one faculty, like you know, uh, is one of my best teacher, uh, DLN Reddy. Uh, he saw all the images and my bachelor uh, sculptures and uh, you know, he was talking about, you are the person I uh, came with the wax models for interview. He asked, yes sir, I was. But you painted nicely, like you know, it looked like a patina effect and all. Yes sir, I was done that. He said like, you know, you have a lot of possibilities. You just start exploring with the mediums. Don't stick with the one medium. So whatever you feel, you start working. So that was the main inspiration, main guidelines I got. From that day onwards, like you know, I start working in a multiple mediums and uh, simultaneously working to the different mediums. Let us say in the morning I start with wood, wood carving, I end with like you know wax modeling. So this was happened uh, during my masters around 2004 till the same fall. If you see in the studio, like you know, lots of raw material, lots of uh, unfinished works because I keep changing things. And somewhere I don't want to be a monotonous.
as a practicing sculptor, we always think about the experimentation. But experimentation, it takes time. Sometimes you finish it in a day, sometimes you finish it in a month, sometimes it is a year. But ultimately, you have to run your studio, take care of your assistants. This is very tough job to deal. Here we stuck somewhere. And then, in that way, you reduce the size, you reduce the medium. And these things happen very casually. But somehow, that time you have to be stabilized and start changing to the other medium. Uh, these things very commonly happen with me. And if you see it in a studio, like, you know, there was lots of stuff. And if you see, like, you know, whatever is supposed to make in a steel, it's an iron. Because I'll say, no, this is the market. Because whatever idea I got, got, got I have to see in a three dimensional form. So these things happen very commonly. Trying to cohere with complexities of the practice of modern conceptual art is a fascinating aspect of an artist. But it is even more appealing to see him grounded to his roots and beliefs without exploiting and reflecting the Indian philosophical elements. His metamorphic engagement towards mastering the dialogue between his subjects and the art gives him the ability to be truly authentic. It is imagination that defines him but also empowers him to create and classify the nature of his vocation. His amount of dedication may seem just another professional approach but not every religious practitioner receives enlightenment. One in a million <laughs> experiences it. And I hope our sculptor is one of those to get rewarded one day. Yeah, during my masters, like you know, I started exploring like you know different material, what uh, DLM was suggested. Uh, so first of all, I used to collect different scrap material in the, inside the campus 
wherever you find the scrap material, I used to take permission from so and so department, I used to get them and start working. And we used to have a, every month there is a display. In that display, like you know, my faculty, everyone saw this, where you found these materials, so and so place I found it, sir, they have it much more. Uh, we have to ask them, like you know, my HOD, like you know, he gave a letter. So show this letter, they will give you the, all the stuff. And I took a couple of letters to the different departments, you know, the very world who, like you know, beside department there is an old cooler, old fan, old table, these kind of stuff I used to find. And, uh, you know, get them into the department, trying to compose it in a different manner. Always trying to compose in a two different materials, let us say wood and bronze, and uh, iron and stone, these kind of experimental I started. And uh, people was getting like, you know, very crazy, what kind of works you are doing? These kind of works, uh, like name wise is okay, but uh, difficult to say these works, my friends used to them. No problem, for survival, like you know, we'll see, we'll do some other work. This is time to experiment. Let us do this experiment, I said. End of the academics, whatever I've done, these are the best pieces, the best pieces. And during my masters, I've done 32 pieces. And out of 22, I sold 16 pieces within a six months. So my friend was wondering, in the same way, but that is purely experimentation. There is no any market conscious, there is no any uh, restrictions. You just do it very slowly. But later on, like you know, once come out from the academics, what kind of works you need to do? And you want to succeed in the market, you want to survive, you have to do certain works. So this unwanted consciousness made me to create little decorative patterns which somewhere not liking, people was liking and let us decided, okay, let us do one work for the people, let us do one work for us. This was the decision I have taken. Uh, end of the day, like, you know, after doing mass, after the masters, again, if we back to the old days, no money, how to start the working, what kind of medium, which is the comfortable medium. So, we are thinking in this way. And uh, one of my potter friend, like you know, if you want terracotta, you can take it from me. Like he said, immediately I went to his place. I've got some terracotta. Six, six and a half month I've done completely the terracotta sculptures. So later on, those terracotta works I started first exhibition in a Kalakriti. So these are the amazing works, the terracotta. So people started calling me like he's a terracotta expert, terracotta artist, which I was not liking, you know. I want to call it as you know multi uh, mediums expert. Like you know, people started calling like you know, okay, he's a terracotta expert. Okay, so this will go in a soon. I was imagining that day. So after few years, uh, I started uh, like you know few commission works to earn money to survive, as well as like you know I joined for teaching in a fine arts college to survive the family and take care of my mother. Then slowly I started small scale of bronze sculptures. So I, like you know, after done few sculptures, I went to gallery. I showed to them, like you know, these are the, my works. Actually, you are supposed to work in a terracotta. What is this medium? Where did you buy? Where did you do it? This, I say, like you know, these are the medium is my favorite medium. This is I learned before my bachelor's from my father. They also surprised. They didn't know the my history actually. What I supposed to like you know where I came from and dot. Then like you know they realized okay this can, this person do like you know all the mediums. Then like you know the first in a month I sold uh, two sculptures. Then uh, I have a very strict rule that like you know whatever money you get, 50% you buy a material. So then you talk about the other things. So this is the way I started uh, sculpting. Just look at him, engrossed in what he does best. Should I say he has enslaved himself? No. Observe his face, in his feelings, in his method of activity. You would not see work. It reflects sheer serenity. These real symptoms appear to believe in the fact that it comes near towards
as a practicing sculptor, like you know, during my masters, like you know, whatever experiments we got, and whatever experiments we done, that is done. And coming to the profession and full time profession, people always expect strong mediums like bronze and stainless steel and the stone. Uh, during my masters, like you know, I used to work with whatever you find and you do it and compose it and give it to the gallery. That is done. And coming to the real profession is a different aspect. Entire six years journey is one way, and after the masters, the other way. Like you know, there's a one six feet sculpture. If you want to pay, there has to be lots of investment. And who is going to pay that such investment? They like you know, you start working in a fiberglass. Then whenever you find it, if you got the money, just convert it to the brass. These kind of things we do generally. If you want to make a stainless steel sculpture, whether you have a money or not, you have to do the work. In that way, we start working with the iron. So we never st stop experimentations. We have to do continuously. And like, you know, once you got the idea in a midnight, you woke up and went to the studio, start scribbling. And the same thing, you want to see a sculpture immediately. You cannot wait. That is somehow like, you know, you forget everything. Whether you have to do it in such a medium, whether you have to do it in other medium, you don't mind that, you just finish it. See, as a practicing sculptor, everyone asks one question. What is your goal? Uh, talk about goal like, you know, every day there is a change. Talk about like, you know, uh, the size wise. Talk about uh, so and so gallery exhibitions and so and so international uh, exhibitions. If you talk about my serious goal, like, you know, there is an organization called Sculpture by Sea, world's biggest uh, sculpture organization. So, twice I got the chance, but I could not send the work because due to the funds and uh, still we are working because everyone think about like you know what kind of medium you do and size also important uh, size medium and value so these are the things you have to keep it in the mind while working really not we don't do that whatever it comes in the mind you know just explore yourself you always conscious on the experimentation always conscious on the form and output, whether this will exhibit in a show or whether this will get in sale or not, no, you never mind. You keep doing working and keep ending. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? This is what enlightenment feels like. Every artist should encounter an awakening in this manner. Even if it takes a while to process it, what shall come ahead of it will be worth the experience.
Now, I can proudly describe this man to be an actual specimen of possibilities that can reach any corner of the world. Look at that! Merging with the source of creative evolution. Everything around him, be it a rock or a metal scrap, leaf or a tree, turns into a potential voice waiting to be beautified by his divine touch. The world becomes his playground, waiting to be endowed upon with his installations. He expands his vision among the elements of nature blending them within the sensibilities of human nature to ordain a balance in his message through his medium. Accolades and rewards have assured ever since an approval for his ideas have followed him a long way yet keeping him immovable from his goal. This becomes a language for the sculptor's soul. He communicates, indulges into exposing the truth that escapes the realities of the mundane human life into the cosmos. Talk about the success and promotion rate. It's a difficult parameters to measure it. Like, you know, we always dream, my sculpture has to be exhibited in a sculpture by CR Nation, maybe in a Kassar Foundation. But I hope uh, these uh, dreams will fulfill one day. We are waiting for that. But keep journeying myself, keep sculpting myself. It's never ending journey. No matter how many remarkable masterpieces he produces or represents his works in plenty of exhibitions or shows in galleries. He will always carry the evolution of the soul manifested within himself for life that will keep him rooted to explore and learn forever. Thus making him unstoppable, he is none other than Shivarama Chari. Mm -hmm.